Welcome everybody. Tonight we're welcoming Dee Suelo. Dee's a sports therapist and soft tissue expert who also works a lot with horses and riders looking at biomechanics. Um, Dee has invented and um, brought to market um, EQ bands, which he uses a lot of it, um, a huge amount with riders to help them become fitter. So tonight we welcome Dee Suelo, sports therapist um, and biomechanics. Welcome. So today we're welcoming Dee Suelo. She's a sports therapist who spent uh, many years working with equestrian athletes, helping some of the best horse and rider com combinations um, to be even better. Um, she concentrates on helping riders be balanced and be fit enough in order to, to ride their horses in the best way possible. Um, and Dee's also um, created EQ bands, which she uses as a tool to help um, riders improve their fitness and recognise um, or how they feel when they're riding a horse. So um, we'd like to pass over to Dee um, and who's going to share some of her expertise and knowledge and also some um, examples of the ways in which we as everyday equestrians can help ourselves by being fitter when we're riding our horses. So Dee, thank you very much and welcome to the Horse Tribe webinar. Seven times. Um, I think what's sometimes a difficulty for riders is that, um, or for coaches, sorry, is that they don't, although you might see that the left shoulder is lower, for example, it is normally nine times out of ten to do with the pelvis with riders. So it's then actually um, how do we correct it um, from the source rather than actually just like the secondary aspect. So, um, and the, the bands are very visual in terms of like in the middle, you can kind of tell like where the problem's coming from. And I'll show you on here. Um, it is it's it's material, though. Um, but hopefully on the video, you'll be able to see like how the bands go. Um, so functional um, activities that will be carried out in a person's everyday life, sport, hobbies and work. So. The biggest thing that I do is work functionally. So we've got to try and do things where it is a, a question and sport specific. There's no point in terms of on a time front, which is the vast majority of the problem, is that riders struggle on a time aspect. Um, so you need to make it like, what are the muscles we actually need to use as riders? So um, the whole thing of what we do is just like making sure we're using the correct muscles and it's all very time efficient. Obviously the balls um, come under that as well. So there's a lot, there's a, there's a lot that you can do with the bands. And that was the whole reason of designing them is that you use them on and off the horse so that you can just take them to a show, tie them up to a lorry inside your lorry, time to your stable whatever um, and you can do a lot of resistance training so um, the bands enable riders and coaches to focus on functional movement that being the key word individual unique movements so you can do a lot of things like for example we have a lot of, like the polo players use them and of course it's about like them getting their swing and going into different ranges so it's really important to put yourself into that um kinesthetic perception and um, proprioception and everything is just so so important and it just cannot be underestimated um yeah beliefs attitude behavior um i think that's also maybe a point to make is that i I'm, i totally appreciate the bands they're, they're such a new thing to the sport um, and i will admit that i've had like quite a lot of resistance to it to begin with but um I like the sort of tag to the bands is resistance is the first step to change. Um, so when the riders, and I've had some of the best riders in the world in them now, and when they use them, all of a sudden they become like quite big fans and obviously want to buy them. So um, it's just a thing of like, whenever there's change, you'll have resistance, but it's about changing the behavior and it not being so just like the horsepower. Um, we've, we've, I think now like, especially with the Olympics and things like that, I think we've really got to start changing it and making sure that 
that it's a it's a lot um more focused on both athletes um and riders becoming aware that they're an athlete as well and um, i think hopefully uh, especially with some of like the top riders in the world now you they, they they're so focused on themselves as athletes and um where a lot of people say i want to ride like whoever uh, you, you just aren't going to if you're if you've got no stability like no stabilizing um at all in terms of in the saddle so it's you you just can't expect to sit at a desk all day and then hop on a horse and expect it to be you know com- like left right all completely the same it's just it's just really not going to happen so you've got to think of ways in which you can just activate those muscles before you get on a lot of people will sometimes say that they warm up on a horse but that's a complete misconception because you're warming up your issues onto that horse and I think especially at amateur level if you've got one horse one rider you always see that they're they're like so interlinked and start like working like counteracting um one another so that it's probably even more important uh um, amateur level than I'd say professional because you've got on professional yards you've obviously got lots of different people riding the horses etc cetera, etc cetera. so um that's like a really important aspect of it uh, I'm just going to move this slightly so um yeah knowing anatomy is obviously really important admittedly for um for this but at the same time they are designed so that um as long as you get trained in them you can you can literally use them anyone can use them and they are actually quite simple to use once you know how to um so collapsed rib cage is a really common one which we can we can change with the bands quite easily um and then core 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 a lot of people will say about the core but it's about people understanding how to use themselves um so the biggest thing actually with the band is when you take them off so I normally do like 15 minutes to begin with, depending on the level of the rider and how they find them. So um, the bands will come up in a minute, but when you put them on, you can change the resistance of them. So they're completely height. It doesn't really matter how tall you are. Um, And obviously you can like increase the resistance on the horse as you go, um, et cetera, et cetera. So um, it's just about getting riders to think and feel what they should be using. But when you take them off, all of a sudden you have this like huge level of freedom that riders are like, oh my God, I feel like I've got lead weights in my stirrups. Um, and actually somebody wanted me to do research on a mechanical horse, but I decided I really didn't want to go down that route um, at the moment, just because the biggest thing for me, to be honest with you, is that you see the horses all of a sudden be like, thank God, like I've been going along with this for like this rider doing this, this and this for however long, and you change it and they literally are just like, it's astounding the difference. So I'll never get bored of that. Um, but of course, the biggest thing is that what you do off the horse is the biggest thing that will, this, that will be the biggest impact for, on the horse. And that's why it's so important that they could be used on and off. Um, so improve it. Like big thing is like um, improving global range of movement um, and individual segments, which you can do quite easily with the bands. And obviously you can do like you can just have the wristbands on, for example. You can just have like one body band on. Um, there's there's a lot of um, different things but yeah absorbing force force creates the force from the surface up into the spine so we have to be able to absorb that movement so sometimes like uh, you can see like riders where they can't uh, they end up using their tack to sort of stabilize themselves Um, and actually something really interesting the saddle fitter that is here um, told us is that stallions lions what have you if you think they always grab on to the mare and it's because it basically uh they, they can't move from there and if you think about how much we put on to like horses with us and sometimes when people like have a lot of like they use their tack to stabilize themselves you it's like no wonder why horses are really struggling to come up in front and actually lift up through their shoulders they end up being so like pectoral dominant and not using anything behind so um it's really important that people learn how to stabilize um that's the key key thing um in order to change habits it has to be pain-free so of course um 
you know, some riders are actually in pain. I think just, again, like the nature of the sport is kind of a bit of a psychological thing, which um, Heidi and I were talking about earlier. Um, but sometimes it's almost, I don't know if it's almost like a bit of a thing of like being hard in a way of like, oh, I just got on, blah, blah, blah. But if you think how much we sort of rehab horses and things like that, you wouldn't just expect them to just keep performing without rehabbing and looking at things. So that's the other part of it is like, it's a great thing for people to be able to actually use the bands, like to rehab things and actually to start getting that range. Because a little bit kind of like what I was saying about um, polos, that if you can't get into a certain range, if then all of a sudden you can, but you haven't got the strength, you end up doing something else, um, like another injury. So it's really important that it's used um, in conjunction with off of the horse and that regardless of bands, you know, that actually riders are doing things that um, are helping them with, you know, if they have got any injuries, et cetera, et cetera. So that's obviously an important part is that if they have got issues, it's about, like I always ask, you know, what, what um, injuries have you had? um but to be honest with you nine times out of ten like I will just sort of watch them to begin with and then I'll be like have you had an injury on that right you know on your right ankle or something and they're like oh yeah like how can you tell um and it's sometimes like I've had somebody that like I think they were like seven years old when they did it and we started doing like ankle rehab and using the bands for them and things like that and like the difference like for their jumping was just insane they're an eventer um so it's just and sometimes as well like some of the elite riders because they're doing so well they're like why do I need it but we've always got to better ourselves like I just don't think you know that's me as a therapist and just in anything in regards to performance I think you know we've always got to be pushing ourselves and you think like where we were even 10 15 years ago like we it's crazy how um far along we're coming and I do obviously believe that <clears throat> the sport is the sport is changing quite a lot and we have got to do that from a public perception side of things as well like it's got to, there's got to be a lot more in it for the horse um so for a coach um big things that i look at is footwear that's a massive um that's a massive aspect for me um increasing awareness can but see the effect but is it the cause kind of what i was saying to you about before like that's that's crucial um so what's quite cool is that say if you've just got the bands on one side you can rather than people thinking it's the one shoulder they'll see that actually it's the rider's leg coming up because the bands are very telltale because they cross dead center in the middle so if you've got something if you've got an imbalance coming down here the bands will sort of like creep up through this section rather than through the whole area so it's quite an easy thing for them to just be like oh that's what I'm doing and the same for the rider because they'll be like oh I can feel that my set my um you know that I'm not pushing down as much so that's the whole thing with the bands that you've got to just see actually I think this is a video oh here we go look at this um I may have, I may have pushed a few too many buttons here but um it's it's really important that oh got lots going on here so you'll see how they um you can see how you put them on but um riders become quite aware actually as to what they're as to what they're doing which is important rather than somebody else having um having to tell them so um you can see how how they're sort of put on and how easy it is really to be able to tell what the what the problem what the problem is normally um, so it's a really good tool for everybody and um, but these are the biggest things so like coordination reaction balance posture sensory strength flexibility awareness muscular endurance that's huge I can't tell you how many people will say I really like they, they struggle like using the band and you have to actually get them a, you know to really train them up to be able to like have the strength but it's mental to think that you're trying to um you know basically be on top of a horse that's whatever amount of weight and strength and then um, people can't even do like a single cart like any car phrases and that really is at all levels as well so we have got a long long way to go but it's just about that like getting it in there and just making it as easy and as accessible to everybody as possible so external effects horse saddle stirrups fences time um which i think i've run through but um, obviously horses are also asymmetrical so that's another point to make 
Um, I'll be honest, that's obviously, I suppose, a thing like coming from me of like where that's how I look at why I know I sort of get to know the horse really well as on their own, the rider, and then put them together. But it's about, you know, us coming together and seeing how we can um, fix that. I'm not a coach. So in terms of the biomechanics, it's so different. It's looking at it from a completely different aspect. So uh, there's a video in a minute actually where um, I work with a coach um, quite a lot I wouldn't really kind of do biomechanics without them because they're on the yard 24 7 and um, they just look at it from such a different aspect um, and it's really important for the rider to be able to have everybody available stirrups are also a big one um, lots of people like different stirrups um, but yeah you've got to obviously factor in the horse is a, is a major um, part of that but I do honestly believe that they typically there are the odd few um they do really want to work for you so there's normally a reason as to why they can't do something um i used to talk about marginal gains a lot and i i still do i suppose um with the elite riders um but i really do focus on like the world-class basics i think so much of the time we focus on all like the really big stuff and all the exciting things but if you don't have those basics there um, they all kind of like fall apart so um, and and all of those little one percent so one of the things that comes up quite a lot with the dressage lot especially like in the Grand Prix is the the second pirouette is never normally as good and it's because the riders are so focused on the first pirouette they get that out of the way and they're like oh god now I've got to gather myself up for like the second pirouette and they're not ready um, but it's hugely costing on marks so it's that repetition reaction focus feel and that's another thing like we use a lot of like reaction stuff at the hub um but it's just about getting riders to be more prepared to have the muscular endurance to be like okay that's that movement now on to the next um obviously there's like a psychological aspect in there as well but um it's just about that endurance sometimes you see that riders like by like halfway through a grand prix or whatever they're doing they're like absolutely shattered um, and that's just like not good enough I don't think really um, you know if you're wanting to be competitive or just really like in a fairness thing to the horse um, in the band set which hopefully you'll see on the screen so where um, India is um, pulling within the set you get basically an anchor point so that you can tie it anywhere so we tie it like up to the beams then you can do all your sort of like TRX type work and so a lot of like back stability um, side of things. Um, but yeah, it's about, so obviously you get two in the pack so you can ride in with two or just the one, but it's so that it can be tied to anywhere essentially. So uh, my riders don't actually have any excuse now, which is marvelous. Um, I'm just going to move this slightly. I'm not sure if you can even see that. Um, but yeah, functional both on and off the horse, variable resistance, um, I also, in terms of like the actual um, material, I was insanely selective. I can't actually tell you how long it took me to get these bands to market um, far longer uh, than I could ever have possibly foreseen. Um, but it's been, it's been worth it. Um, so basically the material is like the same material that they use in like uh, Manchester United, all like the top like clubs as such. I've obviously made designed it for equestrian sport one of the bigger thing big things as well is that if say the band does come off the foot they have actually been changed and altered slightly recently of that there's now um, it, it actually really does snugly fit all the boots um so that's quite cool but if it does come off for whatever reason it doesn't I couldn't have something that pings like elastic or something like that so it had to be a fabric um, and obviously it need, I needed to be able to adjust it for like uh, different heights, different um, strengths, etc. cetera. Um, so what we're doing at the moment, which is really cool and really excited about is we've filmed a lot of exercises for off the hawks and we're doing like somewhere they're like discipline specific. So like the dressage riders can just click on, they're like, okay, these are all the different exercises I can do um, show jumping, eventing, polo, et cetera. Uh, if anyone's got any other requests let me know I can't promise that they'll be um imminent but um yeah there's there's lots we're doing with that so the website is really evolving actually which is really exciting they're washable which I think is really important because obviously they can 
um to be fair they don't actually get that dirty but you know just on a in terms of for other people um that was like quite an important part and they all come in like a washable bag so you literally just chuck them in the washing machine and um 30 degrees um and then they're they're absolutely fine so that was quite an important part and then use any time anywhere no excuses um so now none of my riders can say to me that they're at a show they can't do this they can't do the other um is it going to go okay then like I said, resistance is the first step to change. I think, you know, you, you are always going to have that. It's, uh, it, would, it would be surprising if there's not, but there are many wonderful traditions in equestrian sport, but without development and therefore change more specifically with looking at the rider as an athlete, our sport will not grow. Um, and I do genuinely believe that. Um, so the riders that I chose like to sort of start testing it were they really were the riders that would tell me to uh, go do one essentially if they thought it was uh, not a good use of their time um and if I'm honest it's actually really surprised me how much um the riders have um really sort of like you know really adapted to it and really been keen for it so I think in terms of um the actual exercises that you want to do there's a whole um there's a whole portfolio on the website but the big things is that you need to be using um your anterior and your posterior stabilizing muscles that's really really key um and i can always send as well like a whole load of exercises to um hide in fear for um for you to look at but it's as well like using the balls really important somebody actually like recently was saying about not use you know like about how likely how useful is it having the ball but it's really important that you bring the balance aspect into it and as much as we can do on that balance front um the better really so this is like just one of the ways for example that you can so um you'd sit on the ball ideally having your feet up start doing movements so that's the key key thing I would always say to you like riders will often say oh I can do a I don't know a, a, a plank let's say for however long but that's all well and good but if you can't actually do um if you can't do movement with that um then um it's a bit of it's a bit of a problem because obviously you're always moving on a horse so you always have to create movement with everything so nothing's ever static um i have also got um video on here which i'll come to later um but you can see also here them actually whilst you're on so this is lara butler um so as you can she got one or she's got two on here um but hopefully you can see like how they're how they're sort of um, put on and again like working with the coach is really really important um but you can see how they would start it's you basically have to um go against the bands the bands want to do this and constrict you have to be able to open up and be able to really push against the band um a lot of the times what people will say about put more weight into your stirrups but it's a bit of a wrong way to go about it because you need the weight you need to be pushing from the pelvis and down so that you hug the horse rather than um it being purely through the feet because sometimes you see people doing this as such and it stops the achilles to have that lovely elasticity so if you watch some like the best riders then always have like this lovely elasticity in their feet so it means like for example if they need to like get their hip off and take say like the eventers if they need to be able to just you know take their hip off take another exit and um, take another you know route whatever and um, they can whereas if you're sort of like blocked in it really starts affecting your ability to absorb that horse's movement um and yeah like I, I think the big thing is like when you take them off um it's it, it's it's very much like people just saying that they feel so free but we just can't be so reliant upon like holding on sometimes I say to people like what would happen if I cut your reins because we become very like in need of um holding that contact and really you should be able to sort of sit there yourself within reason without if you just got those reins cut you're just going to go somewhere else so there's such a really cool rider um to sort of show but you can see she's 
she's not impacting that hole. She's not holding it down. She's not using, we've always got to remember that the bit is there for communication. It's not there as something to, for us to be holding onto and expecting horses to actually be able to like come up and use themselves correctly. You've got to be able to sit there yourself and, um, yeah long of the days really now of like say like the old school show jumpers dare I say it where they just sort of like come rambling in on a horse and holding on to it and sort of hoping for the best it's um we, we're just way way beyond that now like Michael Young and Good Clinker all of those sort of guys they're just setting the bar um really really high but they also do so much um off of the horse so that's a really big thing of just knowing um knowing that we have got to be doing things but obviously it's about making it as as easy as possible essentially um the that's a link to the bands bundle which um Heidi can Heidi or Thea can show you I'm sure um and then if you go onto the website there's quite there's a few exercises on there of which you can do off the horse that were all being uploaded actually um very very soon um and there's there's a lot on like social media etc etc so there's eq bands for social media and then there's dynamic performance hub for the hub side of things but um Heidi is there any questions or anything at all fantastic thank you um oh, so if, if someone was just starting out with bands what, would you, you. what are the sort of simple exercises that you think that people you could um you know show to people now or suggest to people maybe you can't hear can you not hear me oh no um oh no no now i can you got me Excellent. yeah yeah good stuff so if someone was just um you know, thinking about um using bands what would be a couple of simple exercises you know, imagine you know, they've all they've done is ride and they haven't done any sort of core stability or any other st stability work what sort of things would you suggest people do I would, say, I would say like it depends on what so I say especially for the office workers having a ball that you can just sit on like a it's better for like healthy sitting mm. but being able to sit on a ball without for example um putting your feet on the floor having like the mini bands for example or you don't even even need a weight you know you can be doing a lot of exercises like getting your rotation obviously that's another thing like a lot of riders stay very static very here and then corners are huge for me like the biomechanics sessions I can't even tell you how much I spend on corners um but it's about like actually getting that movement so we have to train ourselves so um you'd have the mini bands I think there was a photo in there that you actually have to move at the same time as being able to keep stable on that ball um a really good one is like it's called a paloff press so you would hold the band you tie it up you hold the band and you have to come away so that you keep your pelvis completely straight um so you keep the pelvis completely straight and you take the band away from you but you have to keep all of this here and obviously the resistance is coming the other way and why that's quite a good one obviously for riders is that often horses will so you know if they if you find that they fall out through that left shoulder or whatever it is you've got to be able to support them yourself. You can't just go. It's amazing how many people will just go straight to that. Um, other ones, for example, is that you would have um, your feet in too many bands. So like where your feet sit within the band and you have to push. So you go like a, um, like a dead bug type thing with your feet um, in the air and you have to be able to push. So it's that whole thing of just getting your muscular strength. Really easy ones as well is... Um, having the ball behind you and you've got to be able to do like little squats. so you go down into a squat and then you have to stay there and almost do like a rising trot type thing because okay. it just gets your muscular endurance up um so that's that's like a really a really easy one um and then like I said like the TRX so anything in terms of back where you're pulling so that you get because a lot of people use here so when they take um I've actually got it in the other room like I've got like a little saddle horse and when I say like take a contact a lot of people when they take a contact they do this they come up and then mm. if you were stood on a bozu ball or you know if you're sat on a, on a normal ball for example of course you're going to go here so you have to be able to take contact without needing to be doing this with the shoulders 
but where you need to be using that is at the is 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 within here so that's how like when you see like you know those sort of dressage riders they look like they're not having their arms pulled out which i can promise you they are sometimes but it's so that they could, because they actually use here and they use the back you can't it's, it's literally crazy to think you're going to be able to hold a horse purely off your hands and your shoulders and obviously a lot of riders will say like I get really you know they'll say I get really tight shoulders neck etc and also just stress a lot of people hold it there so it's about getting like and you can do a lot of like stretch work so like I said like with the polo guys but it's actually a really nice exercise as it is you can do like where if, if it was tied up for example you can just come into like different areas just to try and get that mobilization because we don't you know a lot of the time people don't actually move their body to get mm. a turn they sort of just use their hand rather than and then that blocks the horse so um yeah there's there's a the um annoyingly actually to be honest with you we filmed so many different exercises but they're all being uploaded onto the site at the moment i don't have access to them funnily enough okay. so um i can always send you like some of those exercises that we've filmed but there's quite a lot on um on the social side of things and also on the on the website there's quite a few brilliant thank you if anyone's got any questions then do type away um Dee, what would you suggest um, for a warm up before you get on the horse then? So um, most people are time poor. I think we've talked about that in terms yeah, of horsey yeah. people. What, what is the, what's the sort of minimal that people should be doing before they get on? Well, I think, I think like 10, 15 minutes, I always try and get riders being able to do. I think just, especially from your point of view, I think psychologically it's really important. Um, so it gets you into that headspace it gets you activated but calf raises are amazing so for example on the um on the on a, on a horse box really easy like on the bottom step but yeah. always put your foot um where you'd have the stirrup and that's another point actually a lot of people have their stirrup here but if i said to you like oh you've got um heidi you've got to stand on a stirrup you've got to stand on this step for however long you're never going to stand on a step with this amount of toe are you because all your weight's going to come back here mm. so it's about teaching people to put their stirrup kind of like where trevor is here to put their stirrup where actually it gives them that when they stand up in the stirrups they've got as much foot underneath them as possible it's like having a horse with like no like with nothing behind it's 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 mad but I, d I don't even know why people do that. I've got, I've literally got no idea. But um, d getting you to learn how to do that, like calf raises are amazing. So you just, you know, you'd stand outside your horse box and then what you can do is put a resistance band with you. And then you, as you come up, for example, you bring the bands up so that you start using your back muscles at the same time. Mm. Um, and then obviously you come down you can be doing things where you're like getting your your turns in like I said like TRX is really important I also get quite a lot of riders skipping skipping is a really easy one um and much to my love actually um when the riders posted about them doing it at Heartbreak the other day so they just did literally like a small skip session just to get their cardio up um and then you can be obviously doing all your sort of like um more sort of stabilizing and, and strengthening work but also stretching is really important because like I said, like a lot of people, they'll hold um, through the knee that you need to be doing that. So a pigeon stretch is really cool where you um, bring your, you'd have like one leg out behind you, you bring the other leg in so that you get that really nice stretch through the glute. And then um, hopefully people know what this is, like it's an open and closed book. So you lie on your side and then you open up um, or you can, to be honest with you, just from a, if you haven't got the space, for example, you can just stand on one leg and actually just put your knee, you put your foot onto the other knee and just do like some general hip openers. Um, anything like hips is, is key. So you could also lie on your side, put a band across, like just over the top of your knees and you just do like a banded clam. So you bring the leg, um, both sides, or you go on your back, you open your legs both out, but you've obviously got the band behind you, so the knees come out. And a lot of people, you'll find that the right and the left is like dramatically different. Um, so 
those I mean I, I I really could go on but there's there's so many different ones but you just got to think like what can you do that's like what do you need to work on so like dressage riders for example we do do a lot of like hip mobility because obviously the whole thing is that they've got to allow all that movement through the event is it is a lot more like the calf phrases I submit you know like actually hold it like muscular endurance and so a really good one for them is like holding a squat, but then just create, like I say, like creative movement with it as well. Um, and then just like, you can even do like lunges, for example, like, a you know, like literally just doing your lunges, you can do RDL. So Romanian deadlift, do you know what that is? No, explain. <laughs> so you'd hold, um, I might actually just be best showing you. I'm in no way... Um, ready for this but I'm fine. So you have a weight here, okay? I might actually just take these off. You have a yeah. weight here and then you have to learn that you come down whilst holding on and then so the weights here for example. The whole thing is that obviously you don't be doing this or this with your pelvis because obviously you'll, you'll come unstuck there and then you go from that with the weight, hold or band whatever you want and then you go into a lunge and then you can actually just step off of that do your romanian deadlift off of here and then do a backwards lunge just on a space front so you don't actually need to be lunging the whole length of something you can actually just do it in like quite a short you know like within quite a um short space but that's the that's the whole thing that i do with the bands on is that i had to have something where you can literally just tie it up to anything that's stable and you can do all of these different movements, but it's it's got, I think, try, you know, I think for where we're at um, at the moment, it's more just about getting it into your daily routine. Yeah. And then you can be a little bit more discipline specific um, with it. So like the show jumpers often, they'll have like quite rounded shoulders and they want to ride quite forward and like have the hands low. So with them, it's all about opening up the back. So you'd have like, for example, um, the bands tied behind you and then you'd be able to like pull forward just to start getting those muscles like really activated mm. um or you can just have weights you know like there's there's so many different things but it's just about being a little bit creative within a small space but you don't need you know um thing that I'd say like to get people to do like is literally just being able to stand on one leg I can't tell you how many people struggle with just standing on one leg without the need to so for example what a lot of people will do is they'll if, if say if i was sit here they'll go like that and up whereas you should be able to stay completely straight kind of think of your rib cage as like a slinky and that you want obviously all those little slinky bits to uh, pieces to be completely even and that you raise your leg but without the need so when i put my leg down and I bring the other leg up it's not like I have to do this to this because you can't expect a horse to be able to do this if 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 you can't um yeah. so it's it's but yeah I think just think about and 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 also just know sort of like everyone's got different you know if you've got an injury for example like I said about that event that's got an ankle injury don't ignore it don't think oh well it doesn't affect me because it absolutely will do so you've got to then think, well, what am I? And take note of like a lot of things I say to riders. I always ask what are like, if I could wave a magic wand, two, three things that the coaches that see you the most would want to change and think, why is that the case? You know, what is it that I'm doing? And then you can actually think, well, I will work on that specifically. Yeah. Because we have to, we have all, like a lot of people in a question sport just because of the nature of horses do do often I'd actually say it's I'd actually say it's more prevalent at amateur level to be honest and um, have a lot of injuries and they just keep going so you can't really be doing all these exercises if you haven't got the the, the mobility for example you know in those areas so it's really important that you address those first so that then you're not almost creating something else um, a lot of people sometimes they'll have like an injury and then they rehab so much on that and they completely neglect the other and then that actually becomes the problem. Um, so it's just about thinking like what are the things that are, I would say think what are the things that come up the most with the coach? Identify what they are obviously and why they might be, they might that might be, 
and then think, okay, well, if I can just improve this, that sort of thing of like world-class basics, yeah. if I can just improve this a small amount, say that's even like a lot of people are quite fixed through their wrists even, um, you can you can do so many different things and then reactions a big thing like um research wise what I've done is like the difference between elite riders and sort of the ones that are coming up because again like if you look at other sports we sort of know what makes the best athlete whereas in a question sport it's a bit of a guessing game within reason um but reaction times are really important ones so you can do you can do things like um it's called a dead bug where you lie on your back and you keep your arms out straight, you put your legs at 90 degrees, and I call them, and I go like, right leg, left arm, left leg, left uh, left leg, left arm, and you have to like keep switching it up, because then you're using your core, but also it just engages your brain, because if you've got to change on court, you know what you're gonna do, if in a freestyle, you've got to change your floor plan a little bit, You've got to be quick with what you're thinking. So it's about trying to get your brain whilst you're obviously having to use yourself. So you can make it, you can make it quite fun. And like that RDL thing that I showed you, um, you can, sometimes I do things where they have like, um, uh, they've got like different things to pick up and you have to be able to obviously stabilize, pick it up, or even if it's weights and then you have to be able to move with it. But you can do lots of different things so that you create um different aspects to it but um i think it, it that is important is that there, like there is some individuality to it but there is just the common things of like i said pelvis making sure that you've got like good strength through your back a lot of people just don't realize how important that is and like i said like just basics like we know we put our feet into stirrups so you know that you've got to have that nice sort of like ankle elasticity so making sure that you can do that correctly but I'd say an important thing is make sure it's like quality over quantity um mm. because a lot of people be like oh I can do I have loads of people that are like oh I can, I can do whatever and actually when I get them doing it properly they they struggle with like a minor amount so um it's just about it being as um individual as possible but you can just do things that are are going to go across the board in terms of all of the different disciplines yeah Brilliant. i think it's it is interesting that you said a, a little while ago that um people riders just tend to ignore um injuries in, in themselves I don't, it, it, there's something about horse riders it's just a bit stoic isn't it no no it'd be fine i'll just battle mm -hmm. on um which is probably why we don't bother to get ourselves as fit as we should either it'll be fine I'm, i think, it's, I think it. it's a cultural thing to be honest with you i think it's just like it's almost like that thing of like arriving school, come on, off, off you get, get back on, you know, you've just got to get back on. Um, and I'm not saying like we're, like we're gonna change, uh, like it's good that we've got a really strong mentality within equestrian sport. We do just get on with things. Um, we don't make a huge sing and dance about it all. So I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that, but it's just really important to think how, I just don't think people have a huge perception as to the the significance of them their, themselves on their horses and yeah. often like I suppose that was like one of the things when I used to because I'm on like I'm very lucky the yards that I'm on all the time and um sometimes I'd hear like coaches just saying the same thing like constantly to the same riders um and it would always be like the horse the horse the horse but I thought if you got that rider on them I promise you they wouldn't do that but it's because of the rider so you've got to you can't you know like your horse would probably go a lot better if somebody else was on it sometimes you know with some riders so you can't then be trying to change the horse because you're the problem you know what I mean mm. um, so sometimes if I'm honest I'm a little bit blunt with people but actually I think pe like I'm as well touch wood but um yeah everyone is you know when I say to people that that's you they're like I'm so pleased you have actually identified that because I have been trying to solve this issue for the last five years being told it's all about the horse and then you just change like the slightest thing of what that rider's doing and that horse is just like thank god you know like I can do that so it's just about rather than always thinking the horse think come out of that 
bubble, if you like, and be like, okay, what do I need to do? Here? What can I do to help this horse here? Hmm. Um, so I think sometimes we get, and you know, that's myself when I was a rider included, that, you know, sometimes you're in the school and you're so determined to get something that you can become like really, really fixed on that. Um, and it's really important that actually we, you know, we actually come out of that sometimes and think, well, what, what can I do to help this situation? It can't just be all on this horse. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because nine times out of 10, they do want to do, um, they do want to do the best for you. And I do think a lot of the problems is because we are, yeah. we're, um, how, how we're sort of, um, how we're sort of riding them really. So yeah within you know within reason it's about looking at it all like I said it is important to look at it holistically but um it is staggering how much when you change a couple of things of a rider that the horse all of a sudden is like a magic yeah. like a magic wand of like oh wow now we can do this yeah absolutely and you know you think about it you're not surprised really you know if I'm all wonky and my one hips in a different place to the other and you know no wonder they they're struggling to find their true balance well, it's like if you think like Wimbledon's on at the moment if you look at I mean like the Andy Murray documentary is just insane um of like how much they do to get to be at that level mm. um and sometimes I watch it and I was like if only sometimes like riders realized what other athletes do to be at that level um but they will, because obviously they're hitting, I'm not saying they aren't asymmetrical, but again, they, they don't have a neat, well, they do, but riders, like riding, you have to be right and left. It's the same as skiing. Um, but even like the, with tennis or, you know, whatever, you, you have to use the other side of you because otherwise you're just going to be hugely asymmetrical. So if you think if people are like at a desk all day, sort of being here at their desk you know like slumped here then they go they muck or they've mucked out in the morning and they're all like this then they're sweeping and they carry a water bucket all of these things and then like they pick up kids and then put the kid on the right hand side of the you know like there they are like walking this baby along and um, the likelihood is you're not going to probably be the most symmetrical of riders so I'm not saying that all of those things can't, but it's about just changing small little things, learn to not be, you know, so dramatically right-sided. And if you, if you, do, if you feel like, well, actually that's just easier for me, well, then you've just got to be able to um, strengthen through that left side. You've got to take that on board and be like, okay, that's what I know from a time perspective. I'm doing a lot with my right. I need to actually be using my left side primarily. Yeah. Um, so, so if we, if you do find or realise where your lopsidedness is, would you recommend training more one side than the other? Or how, how would you go yeah, about so, doing that? I mean, um, I should probably be careful on that and say, like, you know, you, you do obviously need to see professionals on this. Of course. Sort of, yeah. like, do your own little thing here. But um, within reason, yeah, like, it's, you know even just do silly things like and a really easy win is have a have a ball behind your back on the um on the wall put stand on one leg be able to go down into a squat with one leg then swap legs and you'll be it's staggering how many people like when they go right leg they can do all of their lovely little things then you put them on their left leg they can't go anywhere they can't do anything that's a real given easy one of like okay well I should probably practice this because <laughs> obviously like when a lot of people say oh they get you know they'll um going through the left shoulder or whatever it's it's normally because you're not you haven't got the support there mm -hmm. so a lot of people say about the inside they'll always say like about the inside bend but typically it's because when you look at those anterior and posterior slings you're not actually able to, a lot of people aren't stabilizing through that outside. So that's why the inside bend isn't good enough. So yeah, I'd say, yeah, like if you, if you know that you are dramatically different on that side, yeah, you've got to be working on that more, but remember, keep, keep it equal. Kind of like what I said earlier is that sometimes people overwork their weaker side, a little bit like after people have had surgery, yeah. And then actually they end up being worse on the other 
you know, that they haven't had done. So it's, it's, as with everything in life, it's about balance. I'm not saying like all of a sudden I'm expecting people to just be like, the ultimate athlete type thing because I appreciate everybody's got lives and things like that but you've got to think well if I'm if it like for example when people invest in all this money in their horse's shoes for example but then they're walking around like um recently actually there was a five-star event rider and I was like what are you wearing on your shoes like they were like these uh, they literally looked like they they were ancient absolutely ancient they needed to go in a bin and you'd never think, oh, just keep a horse in shoes for like, I don't know, 20 weeks, would you? And expect ultimate performance. You're just not going to do it. Whereas riders just w sometimes wear like these shoes that are just so unsupportive. So it's little things. It's like changing little aspects that will really, really help. Um, because if we wear terrible shoes, it affects like a lot of people have like lower back issues and things like that. And just how you stand, you know, like a lot of people will stand, for example, where they um, sort of like do do exactly what they do on a horse, where they'll choose that sort of leg where they, you know, like where you drop a hip and then they turn that leg out. Well, if you're stood in a meeting or whatever, or you're talking to somebody for like half an hour, 40 minutes like that, it becomes a pattern. So you have to, I'm not saying you've got to stand like out what you're like outside Buckingham Palace, but you do need to be aware as to what am I doing? And equally, like I said about um, office work, is if you're here all day, don't then expect to for one hour after you've sat in your car, driven to the yard or whatever, to then be here. It's, you know, you just, it's, 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 it's like little things, you know, just to even just be conscious of it. Um, and when you're riding, sometimes I say to people, like, just have something, because that's why people do so work so much better with coaches in the school, because they're being, they're constantly being reminded. You kind of do know what are the things that a coach is probably going to say to you, because they, they do come up quite a lot, the same sort of things. But it's because you're being reminded. So I don't know if you've got anything on a psych front on that, but um, sometimes I say, let's just choose, like, something, and that's going to be am I doing X, Y, Z, do you know what I mean? Or you have like different markers for different things. Just because sometimes you see people go round and round and round and it's like, what, what, what's the actual, um, what's the point basically? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so obviously like fun and things like that, but when people are trying to get something and Charlie actually, Charlie Unwin, who obviously comes to the hub a lot, he says that, you know, when you get on, I'm not saying for, you know, it's nice to go like such a lovely summer's evening now. It's nice to just go out for a hack and you don't need to think about anything for sure. But if you are wanting to get some sort of level of performance, I think it's really important to think, okay, what do I want out of this session? How can I help this horse with that? And just not get too zoned into that horse. Um, another thing that actually I would say, we've got um, one of the sports therapists that comes in, he works in um, like F1 and F2. And they obviously have to do a lot of like neck stabilizing because mm. of the G force with the cars. And it's something that actually I'm really like wanting to bring a lot more into equestrian sport because a lot of riders look down, but the head is so, um, it's, it's very heavy. Um, and then we become like, I think because we're looking down, we become like transfixed on that horse. Whereas actually when you come here and you open up and you look and you move, it's astounding. And actually one of the, um, uh, to be fair, she probably wouldn't mind me saying, because she did put it on social media, that sometimes I put tape, I, I put rock tape um, from their hat and I tie it to the back of their saddle um, just from a proper set, like that they can feel it. It's not, I'm not saying they're literally like her, but it's, it's, it's there. And um, yeah, she was like, I cannot believe the difference of this horse's like movement. And it was just because she had all of a sudden, like, if you think when you come here to mm. just being there, it changes the whole, the whole dynamic, you know, like it makes you engage those muscles. So um, just making sure like you've actually got, and you can do like a lot of like neck strengthening work. But I think that's a really important thing of just being like, just general awareness, balance, sort of is the same of like talking about nutrition and things like that, you know, like you've got to just balance it all um so we try and look at everything like pretty holistically so it's not about going in like guns blazing of like let's change the world here and now um but it's just about okay like what can we do that's probably going to have like 
you know some really positive effects and I think you know we sort of owe it to horses really if you think how much that they do for us and how much they put up with you know we've got to do we've got to really have like some sort of accountability for their you know for our performance you can't you don't just have like a horse trotting into an arena or whatever just doing it on their own you know you've got to be the person that's like okay this is how we're going to do this you know yeah, so it's just accountability and um you know just just perception of how much we how much of a difference that we we make and just doing like little small things like I said those world-class basics of like what are the things that keep on have that always come up with me if there's any injuries what are those things let's get those stronger let's look at like no you know everyone not normally needs to be a little bit more mobile you can have some riders that are a bit hyper mobile and they're actually the hardest riders to work with funnily enough um, because they actually struggle with stable, stabilizing they're, they're the hardest riders to work with but they're not sort of like they're quite few and far between but um and then just think okay well what can I do what could be like a really small win and just do it like three times a week that you think right I'm going to do specific exercises um, and bring like some cardio in but I always say to people you're not going to do something like when people do all these like diets and things like that it's mad because if you don't enjoy something it's not maintainable it, you're mm. never going to keep with it so like if i like for example some riders love running some riders hate running there's no point in me giving them a program where they're doing skipping for example if they hate skipping so try and choose things that you think actually that's something i can do also like that was the whole thing i suppose with the balls is like it a lot of people don't like having ugly balls out in the house but have have some have these things somewhere that you easily will be able to think right I'm going to get out and do that um and again like that was the other thing is that a lot of riders don't like going to gyms for some I think it's because like by the end of the day whether whatever level that is that you're at um it's like getting changed you come home from the yard whatever um so try and think okay what can I do small little things and um make it somewhere that you're actually going to be able to do this yeah i think that's such a good point um and i love the top just find three just find just do something three times a week and just the small start will enable you to make quite big gains won't it and so as soon as you see the gains then you know that's going to reinforce I even it had a, um there's a show jumper here actually that she was like do you know what? i used to be so tired after doing your program and now she's like, I feel absolutely fine. And now she's, and she's got a real buzz about it. And she's like, I can't believe the difference. And she said, I just feel so much better. You know, yeah. she just feels more confident. And it is, you know, even like an event I was with yesterday, they were talking about this baby and they've been, um, this horse that they're riding somebody. And they said like, because I've been out for a bit and I haven't been riding as much, this baby was like chucking some moves around. And they were like, it was just staggering how much I just felt like I wasn't going to be able to <coughs> control that situation. And it just shows you like, you know, you do, it's really important that you sort of have that physical capability, I'm not saying for a baby to like chuck you around, but um, just, I mean, like it's, it's, it's funny how much of a difference it makes. And, and probably also from us, you know, like that's what Charlie and I talk about, like and Sandy, like the psychological and physiological side of things is huge. Um, mm it's it, they're so interlinked um and it it does you know if you if you if you feel better and you um you're stronger you're fitter you're more flexible obviously you're going to feel better about yourself and you're going to enjoy riding more because the horse will go better so it's, it's all just a win-win but you don't need to be like going to the next olympics it's just about doing a small little thing that can help the horse and really that's kind of what everyone's in it for of like how can we how can we do this and enjoy it the most for both horse and rider? Perfect, absolutely. One last question before we finish. We've talked about we've talked a bit about warm up. We talked about some of the exercises you can do in your own awareness and kind of creating space for the routine. What about cool down? What would you suggest you do when you get off a horse? Stretching. Yeah. Yeah, just stretch. Like like I said, you've got to be a lot of thoracic mobility. Thoracic mobility is key. Um, and then um, a lot of pelvis opening. Um, and also you can do like, like Pilates is so, you know, you don't even need to have a reformer. I think even just having like, 
you know, I'm guilty for it as well, of that we're so sort of like, I like it about questions that we're like, we're always sort of, you always see, then you always see riders where like, they're never just plodding, are they? They are just like, right, we are <laughs> getting on, we've got things to do, people to <laughs> see, et cetera, um, which is good, but it's really important to just have like some time to sort of just reflect um, and like really interesting actually some of the, like there's some like research of how much it's so important that you can reflect upon a test for example and so many people like they don't actually they wouldn't be able to tell you what went well and what went wrong and it's because like, you would know significantly more on this than me just to say but it's just that basically they can't they haven't actually taken it in they've sort of just got round as quick mm -hmm. as you know they've kind of like but they haven't actually thought of all of those points and being like present um but I think also like just having that time out I try and encourage riders to do that of like everybody has got um you can have 10 minutes even five minutes you know and that's the thing kind of what we're saying is make it achievable for you if 15 minutes you think yeah what a load of you know whatever I haven't got that just do five minutes doesn't matter but then you'll really find that you, you'll quite enjoy it and then all of a sudden you'll just start working it up so even if that's like some general neck rolling then you know going down and thinking about each vertebrae as you go coming up opening you know just doing like anything to try and get that sort of mobilization you know even just things like this holding your you can do like a balance one where you hold your leg for example like you'd bring your leg up on one thing and then you bring it behind you so you get a hamstring and a um, quad um, stretch but you're obviously working on your balance at the same time um, and you don't then you're just stood you know you don't need any space you don't need any kit um, so just just like really simplify it but I would say a cool down for riders probably at the sort of point where we are now because it's only really the sort of Olympic riders that do it, but to my, I mean, God bless you if you do this, by the way, already. Um, but yeah, I think just having that sort of like time out to sort of think what went well, what didn't go so well, how can you change it? But doing sort of like just a general movement routine and make it, make it kind of the same as like I say that with horses, you know, it is good to have a bit of a routine. Um, within reason so you can just sort of like and then you can adapt it. you can think actually I could probably do this and um sort of you know mix it up but I'd say really the biggest things like thoracic mobility hip mobility and balance so if you can put those in um ideal perfect that's brilliant thank you Dee so much for um all of the all of your uh yeah insights and uh, you know, examples of what we can do in real life as well um as, as those people who are sort of at, at the the higher echelons of the sport yeah. um i'm just going to quickly share before we disappear where's my screen um just what's coming up next so um so just what's coming up the next couple um, we've got a couple more to organize um late august early september so the next two webinars that are coming up our uh, 28th of July, um, we've got Georgia Plimley, uh, who's a horse trainer, um, Liberty uh, trainer, um, and previously a stunt rider. So she's got really, really interesting background. She's going to talk about the introducing the basics of Liberty with your horse. And then on the 11th of August, we've got Tracy Cole. Um, she's coming back for a second time. She's going to be talking about managing anxiety. So a little bit of the psychological stuff um, there that we were talking about. Um, so it'd be great to see people for that. Um, Dee, have you got your contact details um, on that slide? Do you want to just quickly share that again? Um, and whilst you're doing that, just to again to say a huge thanks. That was really, really insightful. So thank you. Thank you very much for bringing that along to us. We'll just quickly share those details. Um, um, I don't know where my... Has it disappeared? Well, don't worry, because it will go out in the email to people anyway. So if you go, I think the easiest thing is like Dynamic Performance Hub on social and then EQ Bands um, also on social and then dynamicperformancehub.com, eqbands.com. Perfect. And you're going to run a discount, aren't you, for our gold members? Yeah, 10%. 10 um, I'll send you that um, code so that you can put it on. But yeah, 10% off of, off of the bands. 
Perfect. Thank you so much. And Absolute uh, pleasure. And soon. So if take anyone's care. got any questions, um, just you know, feel free to um, email me. Bring them along. Brilliant. Thank you, Dee. All right. Take, take care. care. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.